Hello, I'm glad you decided to come over and watch this video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you where the quadratic formula comes from. At this point, you probably have watched the other videos of using the quadratic formula, and you know that the formula is x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of the quantity b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Let's talk about where that comes from. Here's where it comes from. A quadratic equation in standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We can solve this equation. We don't have any numbers and that's fine. And one of the things that we are working on doing as high school math students is being able to take mathematic expressions and solve them algebraically even without numbers so that we can handle more complex and more abstract representations of what is happening. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to start by taking this expression, this equation, I should say, and we're going to solve for x by completing the square. Yes, I know there's no numbers there, but we can do this. Let's just go through our steps. In completing the square, the first thing you do is you isolate your c value. So let's do that. ax squared plus bx will stand alone inside the parentheses, and we will have the plus c outside of the parentheses. Our next step is we want to take um, our x squared coefficient. We want that to be 1. Life is just easier when it's 1. And we can see that we have this x here that we need to factor out. So if I take pull the a out, what times a will give me ax squared? Well, x squared. What times a will give me bx? This one's a little trickier, but that would be b over a. I'm sure that looks a little confusing to you at first, but if we multiply this through a times b over a, the a's divide out and you just left with the bx. And of course, we still have our plus c on the outside. The next step in completing the square is we take half of our middle term, b over a, we're going to square that and add it into our expression because we're trying to turn this expression inside the parentheses into a perfect square. Let's do that. We still have x squared plus b over a x and half of b over a is b over 2a because we're just multiplying it by one half and we're going to square that. If we add that inside the parentheses we have to also subtract it from outside the parentheses so that we can keep everything balanced and we have to remember that we've also got this a value on the outside which means we're going to subtract a times b over 2a squared and of course all of this is still equal to zero. Let's simplify some things here, kind of pretty this up a little bit. We know that this is going to be a and now all of this stuff inside of our parentheses because we've completed the square is going to be x plus b over 2a quantity squared. Nothing has happened with the c. This expression, I'm going to do this in steps so we can see how it works. When we're squaring a fraction, we square the top, we square the bottom. So this is going to be a times b squared over 4a squared. That's what you get when you square b over 2a. Now we're going to multiply this a through. Nothing has changed with the front half of this side of the equation. 
And now when we multiply this A, one of these A's is going to divide out. And that's going to leave us with minus B squared over 4A equals 0. All righty. Let's do one thing just to sort of um, make dealing with this a little bit simpler down the road. And I'm going to group this part of the expression together, the C minus B squared over 4A. There's no X involved in that. So I know that that is going to be just a plain, simple number. If I knew what C and A and B would be, it would give me a number. There's no X involved with it. So let's just group the whole part of the expression together as one unit, and it'll make moving it around a little bit simpler. So we want to be recall when we are completing the square that final term that you get when you subtract the b over 2a from your c uh, we end up moving it to the other side so I'm going to do that now so I'm going to subtract that whole expression away and I'm going to do that to both sides I don't know why I made my C red in this case. I should have stuck with the color pattern, but it is what it is. So now these have subtracted out, and we're left with A times X plus B over 2A quantity squared equals the opposite of C minus B squared over 4A. Let's do one more thing to make our life a little bit more simple, or simpler, whichever the comparative form is of that word. We've got a negative 1, basically, is what we're doing, times everything inside of these green brackets. Let's go ahead and distribute that through. So that gives us b squared over 4a minus c. And over on the other side, we still have a times x plus b over 2a quantity squared. It would be really nice if this was all one fraction and we could make this as one fraction over one denominator. Let's go ahead and do that. Our common denominator in this case would be 4a. So we're going to need to multiply the c by 4a over 4a to get a common denominator. And when we do, that gives us b squared minus 4ac all over our common denominator of 4a. That's what happens when we multiply that through. Okay? And on the other side, we still have a times oops, x plus b over 2a quantity squared. Believe it or not, we're getting close to the end. Hopefully, this is starting to look like the quadratic formula to you. You can start to see the b squared minus 4ac begin to appear in our expression. Now, we need to get rid of this a. So we're going to divide both sides by a. And that's really the same thing as multiplying by 1 over a. And when we do that, that leaves us with x plus b over 2a quantity squared on the left and on the right I have b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared because top times top bottom times bottom in our fraction 4a times a gives us 4a squared. Whew. 
getting close. We are now to the point where we take the square root of each side. That leaves us with x plus b over 2a on the left. And on the right, we have plus or minus, that should sound familiar, the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Just a reminder about how to do fractions when you have square roots is you take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. This stuff on the bottom, that's a perfect square. The top leaves us with plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And the square root of 4a squared, we take the square root of 4, which is 2, the square root of a squared, which is a. And this is starting to look more and more like the quadratic formula. We're almost there. All we have to do now is subtract this b over 2a from both sides. And you can see we get x equals the opposite of b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And wouldn't you know it, we've got two fractions with the same denominator. So we can go ahead and combine those into one numerator. And that gives us the opposite of b plus or minus. Let's write that a little bit more neatly. The opposite of b, I'm not sure that was much neater, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's how you get the quadratic formula, by completing the square all the way up here on our standard form equation.